Copyrights and intellectual property are one of the most overlooked topics in our job as UX and UI designers, and many of us learn about them the hard way. So what you can and cannot use in your designs? What do you need to be cautious of? And finally, how to protect your work? Over the past decades, copyrights and intellectual property were typically related to the field of industrial, fashion, arts and other types of physical design. But what about user interface and user experience, a field of design that primarily exists in digital, non-physical form? Law is very specific to the country that you are operating from. But in general, we can identify three mechanisms that are commonly used to legally protect intellectual property of digital designs. Copyright, trade dress and patents. Software code can be and very often is copyrighted. But when it comes to the UI part of software, courts are still struggling with application of copyright law. This means that there is a lot of uncertainty in terms of what is protected by this law and how it would be interpreted in courts. In Dr. Craig Rosenberg's article on the subject, we can read that in general you can copyright the expression of the idea, but not the idea itself. So you couldn't copyright the idea of a clickable button, but you can copyright the artistic design of a specific button. For example, Apple's original trash can icon is protected by copyright. The more artistic and original your design is, the more protection copyright may offer. From that we can deduce that protection offered by copyright is limited. And while copyright may protect some individual design elements, it's not a good way to protect an overall user interface. Then we have trade dress, which refers to the visual appearance of a product, its packaging or other elements that make it recognizable. Key aspect is that product or its presentation must be highly recognizable and known by wide audience. The best example of a trade dress is the shape of Coca-Cola bottle. Trade dress may be used to some extent to supplement UI copyright, and most of the time it is used for protecting the overall look and feel of a digital product. Lastly, we have patents, which are the most popular tool for protecting a user interface. Patents are best suited for protection of things that perform a specific function, but they also can be written in a way that protects overall look and feel as well as individual design elements. In comparison to copyrights, where infringement requires accurate copy, patent infringement can be proven if a design is similar enough, but it's not a copy. Over the years, companies that deal with software development accumulated thousands of patents, and most infringement cases over UI and UX design deal with patent violation. The most known examples are battles between Samsung and Apple over their UI patents. Apple is well known for its designs. Current Currently they have over 1300 patents related to their products, UI and UX. Big tech companies like Google, Microsoft, Samsung and other ones have thousands of their own patents, with hundreds of new ones issued every year. A list of things in their patents includes how UI elements will appear on a screen of the devices, how the interactions of users would look like, up to metallic texture of the finished device's frames. Right, so now you know more about mechanisms that are in play in terms of protecting design intellectual property. But after all this talk about copyrights and patents, you most likely notice that there is something weird going on. Because there is a lot of copying and inspiring in the product design field. Which leads us to the concept of design piracy. In short, design piracy refers to the knockoffs and imitations that copy the original designer's intellectual property. When we look closely at apps from the same industry, we can quickly notice that most of them look very similar. Not only that, but we can find the same visual and behavioral patterns across all platforms, websites and apps, and very rarely we can hear about copyright infringement lawsuits. Well, as I quote Craig Rosenberg's article, you can copyright the expression of the idea, but not the idea itself. And that means as long as you aren't copying something one to one, you should be okay. UI and UX design are full of well-established patterns, to the point where finding the original is impossible. It's expected from us that we would use and follow those patterns in our work, because users find new concepts difficult to learn and navigate. Jacob's Law states that users prefer for apps or websites to work the same way as all other apps or websites they already know. So design piracy is something unavoidable in our field, I'm afraid. But I would add that maybe it's better to inspire ourselves by the work of others than trying to mimic 
make them one-to-one. -one. I also wanted to mention things that you should care about and be careful in your work. Because I noticed that a lot of designers are struggling with it, especially at the beginning of their careers. All our UI designs, apart from shapes we are creating for buttons, frames, boxes, backgrounds and so on, use things that most of the time are copyrighted. Most of the time you won't be designing your own fonts, icons, you won't be making your own photos or illustrations. So, whenever you are using external resources in your projects, make sure that you have the legal rights to do so. In software development field, copyrights are typically handled, described and shared through licenses. Even if you are using free resources or materials that you copied from Figma community, for example, make sure that the license described the allowed usage. Never, ever, never copy or download something without making sure that you have the license for it. Because if you don't and you use those resources in your commercial projects, you may be held accountable for copyright copyright infringements by copyright holder. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to learn something else today, please watch this video here. To the next time.